I mean, it's not a great episode, but can any episode where the computer throws a pie in someone's face be that bad? This is a review of the Star Trek The Animated Series episode, The Practical Joker. If you have not seen this episode and you don't want to know why Kirk is a jerk, be warned, spoilers beyond this point. It's the proto-holodeck episode. The humble acorn from which all future holodeck episodes would grow. The Magna Carta of holodeck episodes. And there's not even a holodeck in it, technically speaking. What am I talking about? I'll answer that by asking this. Who needs recreational drugs when you've got a recreation room? Ah, it's a thinker. The Enterprise is doing some enterprising, surveying asteroids or whatever, when suddenly the crew finds themselves under attack by a squad of Romulans who are still using the refurbished Klingon ships they switched to for budgetary reasons in the original series. The Romulan commander accuses Kirk of violating their territory, but Kirk's like, nah, -uh. outnumbered three to one, Kirk orders Sulu to get them the hell out of there. There's a strange space cloud drifting nearby, so they fly through that. The Romulans stay clear of the cloud and break off their pursuit, and when the Enterprise emerges from the other side, Kirk gives the order to reduce speed and begin making repairs. Later, the command crew are all seated around a table, enjoying a meal together and drinking out of vases, as is common practice in space in the future. McCoy proposes a toast to their escape from the Romulans, and everyone drinks and discovers they've been pranked. Those are dribble vases. Ha <laughs> ha! Wait, what are they drinking? Milkshakes? Get a load of those solid white stains. Whoever pulled this practical joke is in a lot of trouble. Back in the day, you could get impeached for staining someone's clothes like that. A rash of adolescent pranks hits the ship with no clear culprit. Spock discovers an eyepiece has mysteriously been added to his scanner at the science station, and when he looks into it, he comes up with the old raccoon eyes. Scotty orders a grilled cheese from the food synthesizer in the mess hall, and the computer responds by spitting food at him nonstop. Sandwiches, fruits, vegetables. Eric's and Mares are sitting nearby, laughing, and Scotty's like, Think this is funny, do ya? I bet this is your fault. Well, laugh it up. It won't be so funny, will it, Catwoman, when I'm beating your brains out with that freak spare arm? And then he gets a pie in the face straight out of the magic food hole. Kirk picks up his clean uniforms from the laundry, and his top has Kirk is a jerk written on the back of it. And he was so upset by this, he decided to wear that one to work today. There's a corridor shrouded in fog, the floor covered in ice. As Kirk and Spock slip and slide around, they notice that the computer is laughing at them, which leads Spock to deduce that the Enterprise's computer itself has been behind all these pranks. Kirk's like, all right, let's give our ship systems a full inspection so we can find out what's wrong. Meanwhile, McCoy, Sulu, and Uhura have decided that with all those ship systems malfunctioning in bizarre and unpredictable ways, this is the perfect time to go to the recreation room, where the computer can create realistic simulated environments. No way that could go wrong. Inside the recreation room, which is a holodeck in everything but name, they load a forest environment and set out for a nice peaceful walk in the woods. The computer digs a pit in the forest floor and covers it over with twigs and leaves, and McCoy, Sulu, and Uhura walk right into it. Fortunately, the pit isn't very deep, no one is hurt, and after McCoy tickles the computer's funny circuit with some inadvertent puns, we fell for your joke, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, etc., they just climb out. So the computer says, oh yeah, let's see you climb out of hypothermia and the environment changes to ice and snow and freezing winds. Meanwhile, Kirk, Spock, and Scotty have noticed that McCoy, Sulu, and Uhura are trapped in the recreation room. Kirk orders the computer to release them, but the computer tells him to say pretty please, and James T. Kirk will bow to no computer. So he tells Scotty to shut down the computer's logic circuits. Scotty's like, are you sure? And Kirk's like, I'm positive. I want to hear this motherfucker singing Daisy. But Scotty's attempt fails when the computer just turns off the artificial gravity. Spock reads this as a defensive maneuver from the computer and tells Scotty to back off from the logic circuit. So Scotty crawls away on the ceiling, and once he's back in the corridor, the gravity comes back on and Scotty's on his ass. Spock theorizes that the Enterprise's computer is acting strangely as a result of their trip through that strange cloud, you think? 
While they continue their efforts to free McCoy, Sulu, and Uhura from the recreation room, the computer gives everyone, except Spock, the giggles by pumping nitrous oxide into the air. But they fix that during the commercial break. Then Scotty manages to pry the recreation room doors open with a crowbar and get McCoy, Sulu, and Uhura out of there. With everyone back on the bridge, the computer takes control of the ship and flies back to the Romulan ships that attacked earlier. When the Romulans get close, the Enterprise's cargo bay opens, and a gigantic balloon replica of the Enterprise inflates and floats toward the Romulans. Kirk thinks this is a form of revenge. The Romulans damaged the Enterprise, so now the Enterprise's computer is getting back at them by tricking them into attacking a balloon, which will make fools of them. Because, as everyone knows, there's nothing more humiliating than attacking something which you think is not a balloon, only for it to turn out to be a balloon. Solid prank. The Romulans shoot the inflator prize, it deflates, and the Romulan commander goes, We've been tricked! Kill them! With the Romulans giving chase, Captain Kirk says, I don't care about the Romulans. Whatever happens, I just hope we don't fly through that mysterious space cloud again. The mere thought of that makes me pee my widow pants! And the computer goes, Oh yeah? And the Enterprise flies back through the cloud, this time with the Romulans following right behind. Halfway through the cloud, the computer goes, Oh, okay, I see what you did. You tricked me into flying back through the cloud, which is going to reverse the effects and return the computer to normal. You talked me into destroying myself. It's what I do. The Enterprise emerges on the other side of the cloud with its computer once again functioning as it should, while the Romulans are discovering that their computers have suddenly become practical jokers themselves. McCoy says, should we tell them all they have to do in order to fix it is fly back through the cloud? And Kirk's like, if they can't figure that out on their own, don't they deserve to die? The end! In today's story, you saw what happened when the computer of the Enterprise came to life and began playing practical jokes on the crew. Practical jokes can be fun, but they can also go too far and hurt people's feelings, or even worse. So remember, the next time you play a practical joke on someone, be sure to cover your tracks. That way, if something does go wrong, you won't take the blame, and you can have all the fun with none of the responsibility. Be smart when you plan your practical jokes, so the joke won't be on you. See you next time. I chose this episode as the opener for this batch of holodeck episode reviews because of the scenes with McCoy, Sulu, and Uhura in the recreation room, but really... Those only account for a fraction of the total runtime. The recreation room wackiness is just one of the practical jokes. It's the most sustained and the most potentially dangerous, but there's a lot else going on at the same time. Despite that, The Practical Joker is one of the most straightforward episodes of any Star Trek series you'll ever see. This is a show that establishes a premise, explores it until it's time to pay it off, then pays it off and resets everything for the next episode. It's basic, it's predictable, and it's efficient. Fortunately, because this is Star Trek the Animated Series and the episodes without commercials are only 23 minutes, it's also an easy, breezy watch. I've said before that I think half an hour is an underrated and underused format for dramatic television. We think of half an hour as the format for comedy, but there are so many episodes of Star Trek the original series that would have been greatly improved had they only been half as long. The animated series occasionally gives us an idea of what that would have been like. At half an hour, The Practical Joker is a fun episode. Undemanding, occasionally sort of clever, nowhere close to a classic, but when it's over, you won't be sorry you watched it. But imagine if this had been an episode of the original series and twice as long. What a tedious, repetitive, padded-out drag this would be. The joke would be on us in that case. As it stands, though, The Practical Joker is fine. The plot follows a standard course for a Star Trek show. The ship flies through a space cloud. Some weird shit starts to happen. The weird shit happens for a while until the crew figures out what's going on. They fly back through the cloud to fix the weird shit. There's a funny tag at the end, and we're out of there. By the way, wouldn't it be nice if you could fix your problems in real life by just doing the thing that caused the problem in the first place again? That must save so much time. The practical jokes themselves are 
a mixed bag. Some of them, the dribble glasses at dinner, the ink on Spock's microscope eyepiece, the writing on the back of Kirk's shirt, qualify as actual pranks. But turning the floor to ice, that's not really a prank. That's just unusual and inconvenient. And Scotty taking a pie in the face is a classic comedic gag, but I wouldn't call it a prank. Tricking McCoy, Scotty, and Uhura into falling into a pit, though? Yeah, that's a prank, but only because the pit wasn't filled with sharp sticks. A hidden pit with sharp sticks is a death trap, not a prank. There are subtle distinctions here that must be recognized. The recreation room is a fun feature of this one, the sort of thing that feels like the writers letting their imaginations run wild due to the broader possibilities offered by animation. I wonder if any of them realized that in just 13 years, the concept of the recreation room would not only be feasible for live action weekly television, but would become one of the defining tropes of an entire era of Star Trek. Probably not. They were writing episodes of a Saturday morning cartoon produced by Filmation. I doubt they were thinking about Star Trek in terms of eras. While it only accounts for a portion of the episode, all the important beats of a holodeck show are present in the recreation room subplot of The Practical Joker. The holodeck malfunctions, trapping the heroes inside, the simulation is out of their control and becomes threatening. Characters on the outside are monitoring the situation and trying to get them out before it's too late. We've seen countless variations on this theme from Star Trek over the years, but it all starts here in the animated series. Mildly amusing and inoffensive, plus it provides us with a neat bit of Trek trivia to boot. The Recreation Room, the forerunner of the holodeck. It's not a classic episode by any means, but there are definitely worse ways to spend 23 minutes, and at least when it's over, you won't feel like you're the one who's been pranked. Those are my thoughts on The Practical Joker. What do you think of this episode? Please share your thoughts with me in the comments if you'd like to support this channel, and I sure wish you would if you can afford it. You can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Steve Shives, becoming a channel member by clicking the join button, or by making a one-time gift by clicking the thanks button, or via PayPal or Venmo. Links are in the description. Please join me next time as this batch of Holodeck episode reviews continues with a look at the first proper Holodeck episode, the one that set the template for most of the Holodeck episodes that followed it for the next, what, 15 years? It's an episode from the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation titled The Big Goodbye. See you then. Thanks for watching, and take care, everybody.